another episode of Sex, Lies, and Lawyers. Sam Ryan Hidari here with Angelo, one of our friends from Vegas. Uh, let's uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sam. Uh, How are you doing? I'm 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 15 months uh, liver transplant right now, so I'm just yeah, I'm I blessed to be shirt, here. I'm, I'm blessed to be alive. So I'm I'm just grateful that uh, the doctors will allow me to come to shows like this. Yeah, um, today I noticed that you yeah, had a transplant. Tell us about the story. What what happened to you? Yeah, like, so um, so uh, with myself, um, 15 or last year in July 22nd, I didn't realize that I had been born with this disease that's actually the number one uh, killer and cause for liver cancer throughout the world. It's called chronic hepatitis B. So uh, I, I'm starting to feel just a little bit sick uh, around the first week of June of you 2022. You never knew about it before? No, because it's something that you're not educated about. If you remember, uh, so I'm I'm an 80s baby, right? Mm -hmm. like where like I me. grew up in the 80s. Yeah. I was born in 75, grew up in the Philippines and came here in 1985. But during that time, we were being educated a lot about HIV. Mm -hmm. Big HIV, everything, everything you want to know about HIV. But none of us really understood how dangerous hepatitis B is and how there is still no cure, how it, it, uh, it kills people. It's a silent killer and you won't know anything's happening to you until it's too late. And when it's too late, uh, unfortunately, Sam, not, not very many people are fortunate enough to have a miracle happen like what had happened with me. Um, so and you never had any symptoms. Since. So that's the, it's the weird thing, right? Um, I'm sure like yourself during this time when you're growing up, you know, you always want to try to tough things out. And in the Filipino culture, in mm -hmm. my culture, we don't like going to see doctors. I mean, unless mm -hmm. it's like you're seeing something completely broken, you're not going to the doctors because you're trying to home remedy everything. That's the problem uh, we had with yeah, the that, Filipino clients. Yes, that <laughs> is they a don't say, oh, They I don't want to see. It's just a pain. It's just every day is a five out of 10. I deal with it. And say, what? Yes, and you're abs and you know what? That's just they a cultural that um, uh, thing that we have because we want to just work it they like through. To suffer. <laughs> yeah, you, well, we just want to work things out. You know, we're always thinking of oh, oh they're it's patient, fine. They're hardworking usually. And exactly. They're they not complainers. Yeah, exactly. Filipinos will not complain, right? Um, so with me last year, I'm going into the first week of June and. Um, my family, my lady, my son, they were all looking at me and they're like, you know what? You don't seem as energetic as normal. Um, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. And I was just thinking, no, nah, I'm fine. It goes into the following week and my, my, they started to say that my skin was turning yellow. But you know how when you're, you're assessing yourself, you don't think your skin's yellow. Like I didn't think my skin was yellow. So I was like, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little weak. And I could still go do stuff. I'm still lifting things. I'm, you know, I feel just fine. Um, and then by that third week, it had gotten so bad that um, they were scrambling here in Las Vegas to try to find a, a, a GI of some sort to try to check out what's Check going on with me. I, as you know, you're being here in Las Vegas. The it's problem we have is, well, we're it's number true. 50th in healthcare, which is terrible. It's something that um, I know for myself and a lot of other people who are volunteering, we're actively working on. And the medical malpractice yeah, on, is bad. Yeah. Well, yeah, and trying to get medical help here. Um, but by that June 29th, and we're going into the uh, July 4th weekend of last year, um, I was brought into Mountain View Hospital. We do not have a transplant center here in Las Vegas. So if, if you're lucky enough to get called in to have a transplant done, you're going to have to travel to Arizona or New Orleans or California. Most people don't. Most people do not know this. Um, and there's no re really, there's no good reason as to why we don't have a transplant center here, which is one of the initiatives I've been working on, actually trying to bring one and, and talk to different people about how to do it. Uh, but so what, what happened with do, me, they so they what happened with me. They the patient with the or organ that is harvested to somewhere else? Well, first of all, it's not, it, it doesn't really work that way. It's, it's, it's gifted, right? So Nevada right now, where I believe top three states that gift organs. So if something were to happen and uh, there's a group called the Nevada Donor Network that's based out of here mm -hmm. in Las Vegas and another one up north in Reno called My Donor Network West uh, or Donor Network West and uh, they go through an organ 
procurement, but if it, but none of those, I mean, unfortunately, because the people who need it that are here in Las Vegas or here in Nevada period, they have to leave. And, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of issues with that. So you mean that your donor was from Vegas? I don't know where my donor was, was from. I'm, I'm assuming my donor is from California because I didn't get to read that uh, file until uh, June of this year. Mm -hmm. But um, with me, I was in oncology at Mountain View Hospital here, right, Sam? And I was dying. And they told me by that, by July 5th, they said, you only have 30 days. And I even asked them, I, I, I mean, you know, I'm feeling weak. I'm, I'm pretty much just kind of in a deathbed. They're doing everything that they can to just keep me comfortable. Um, but they said that the only way for me to get past this is if I could somehow get a liver transplant, um, which is all really shocking. It was extremely shocking to my entire family. It was, it, I mean, everybody was just, we're all no just praying. Um, and then, and you know, I'm just fighting, uh, you know, you're, you're thinking in your head, what am I supposed to do here? So, uh, a miracle happened and this, uh, group of nonprofit doctors who do liver transplants, kidney transplants, pancreas, they deal with cancer. Um, they saw my case and they take cases that are critical people that are about to die. Um, so they saw my case and even with, and I'm sure you deal with this a lot in injury law with insurance malpractice, right? Mm -hmm. So part of the issue that we have in the healthcare system is insurance. Essentially, I hate saying it this way, but it's almost like they wait for you to just die mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of kicking in what you need to kick in. Lucky for me, and again, it's a miracle, Sam, that this group um, it any, for free without uh, any authorization. Well, well, we're waiting exactly, for the they had company to wait. To, you're to absolutely get. right, Sam, because they had full autonomy. Uh, the doctor's name is Doctor Anand Anomaly, mm -hmm. and the group is called House Medicine. So if you look up housemedicine.com, you'll see this group. And he saw my case, and he said, "Hey, I could save this person." So don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. So yeah, in California. So they just had opened their fifth um, uh, transplant center at that point last year. It's and I was the people that they get rejected by the uh, they, insurance company. A lot companies. of people get rejected all the yeah. time, and and that this is why. Who was your insurance company? Uh, so my insurance company is uh, um, at that time is uh, United Healthcare. United Healthcare uh, and I had, rejected you? Uh, United Healthcare PPO. And yeah, there was a lot of problems there, Sam. For example, the transport during the July 4th weekend. I was supposed to have gotten helicoptered in um, by the 5th to a group that like UCLA. But UCLA wasn't taking me because insurance hadn't upfronted the money for the transport yet. And then the beds started closing because we're still dealing with COVID, COVID. especially during that time. And then by the time I got to July 7th, my MELD score, which uh, for the viewers that are going to look it up, um, the MELD score is the score that tells you how close you are to dying, essentially. And um, mine was already at critical. I was already getting close to 40. And, f and past 35 means you're you're basically going to die now. Like you, you this have to, group help you to get the transported as well? Uh, yeah. They, uh, so essentially the hospital, Mountain View Hospital, uh, um, they went ahead and they... Uh, got an ambulance and they just upfronted the cost for that for me to get going. And then the Riverside Hospital, which is based in Riverside, California, Riverside. they opened up a bed when there wasn't any, when all the beds were closed during UC that. Riverside uh, Hospital? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's actually called Riverside Community Hospital. Community. Yeah. Um, so they opened up the bed and then it's this group, the house medicine group of doctors and Dr. Anand Anomaly and his mm -hmm. team that took me in, uh, Dr. Same Fayak, uh, Dr. Brendan Boland, they all took me in. Um, and from the time, so just to give you an idea of, there are people out there right now who are, who are it could be over years of waiting for a transplant to happen. Someone like me, I had 30 days. And by the time they took me in, because these doctors had full autonomy, they took me in on the 9th, I was approved number one in Southern California for the donor list by the 11th. And um, on July 16th, I was How blessed. How old are you? 
I'm only 48 years old. 48 years. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> it, it, it's all very shocking. But not again. Now, now I'm out there. I'm trying to educate everyone the best that I can to let them know. You might have what I have. You don't even know it. I have a friend. Um, he's got like a million TikTok followers, and he didn't know it. And I got to know him through social media because he's 39, and just this February, he needed a liver transplant. He's in New York, and uh, he didn't know. <laughs> but they brought him in. He was getting ready to go to Hawaii with his wife. They brought him in. They said, hey, you're going to die. Um, they ended up, you know, luckily for him, he was gifted a liver. The liver was a little too big, but, you know, they really didn't have a choice. They had to move fast. Um, so he's been in and out of hospital between February and now about six times, but he's doing really well and he's progressing really well. And when, and when you're blessed, Sam, like, you know, I'm sure you've worked mm -hmm. with clients like this. It's a different mentality when you know you, your old life, you were going to die. Mm -hmm. And now you're sitting here with Sam <laughs> talking to him about what's happening. And, and, and again, it's still very early. Um, you saw when I came in, I had to wear a mask. I can't be around a lot of people. Uh, I can only eat up to 80% of the food that I used to be able to eat because of all the anti-rejection -re and all the medications yeah, I'm in. So, um, so like I said, you know, just trying to be on as, as, as many influential people in front of influential people like yourself as much as I can so that I could Let share the story. You, what was the feeling that you got rejected by the health insurance at that moment, close uh, to the death? Actually, and uh, they are saying that it takes time. It takes time. You it, have to go through the paperwork. It, it was it was it was very dejecting. Um, uh, I was I was devastated. I I literally at a at a certain point, and people were when you're going through what I was going through, uh, encephalopathy starts to set in mm -hmm. in your brain, right, where you're not supposed to be coherent anymore. And I was fighting it because I felt like we're not taught how to really advocate for ourselves when it comes to the healthcare system and especially when it comes to talking to insurance. So I remember having to grab the phone from my brother and start talking to the insurance person at United Healthcare. They were cold at English. Uh, uh, well, yeah, because I, I mean, I, I, the person behind the line, he was trying to be as nice as he could. And I think what woke him up a little bit is I told him, I said, listen to me, man, I am literally dying and I need you guys to get this transport to happen. Um, so I think that that woke him up a little bit. And then he called me, and this is another problem. He called me, I, I think a few hours later, and he said, hey, we actually called UCLA and we told them we're approving it. But they told me they even had it in recording, but the lady who was supposed to be in charge of that it was a voicemail and she didn't respond. So again, when you're dying, Sam, <laughs> you need things to happen fast. Counts. You you, yeah. you can't have administration and, and in all honesty. You know that we sue insurance companies I, I, for this so, kind of the bad fate and I, the lack of action. I was going to actually yeah. ask you uh, about, about that. And, uh, and, and specifically the PPO plans. Yes. The Blue Cross, Blue Shield, all those companies yeah. or United Healthcare or these insurances that they have not the proper procedure for the emergency basis that cause the death and like this that there are people on the deathbed and they cannot just get the approval or they are rejected or there is a cancer treatment they are not approving it we say it's not fda or it's something that is not research-based we are not going to pay that because it's too expensive those are the kind of cases we take can i ask you yeah. have you found because i i did talk to a, uh, i wish i knew your group at that time um when I was starting and again the recovery process for transplants for liver transplant is two years or longer. So I, like I told you, I've only been at 15 months. I didn't get out of the hospital till closer to November or till closer to uh, September. Yeah. And then, and then I, yeah. Then, uh, and then I didn't get home until here and back in Vegas. So I had to be in California that whole time. And my brother had to put up a, a thousands of dollars in costs to keep me there. Right. Um, so, and yes, the insurance 100% didn't cover it because they said that the hospital was not one of their preferred, preferred or what the anything. what they call the, in the network, excellence. Uh, yeah, in, in, uh, in network preferred provider. Yes, yeah. So, um, so that was another issue. And when I finally got back here, um, I did call a couple of lawyer groups, um, and I explained them the story, and they said just like what you said that there are stories that, um, you know, because of, of 
I forgot the terminology you would know, but it's a malpractice to... It's a bad faith, acting in bad faith, not having your policy procedure in place for emergency basis, surgeries, or failure to approve the treatment that is needed and necessary and causing harm to the patient because of the delay. Have and you, it's unreasonable to delay and it's unreasonable to reject that kind of coverage for that kind of thing. And the clients cannot, the insured cannot afford it and they get damaged. Either they, uh, the cancer progresses from a stage two to four okay. or they get um, not transported. Fortunately, you were lucky you didn't yeah. die, but some people die. Yes, because exactly. Because they don't, they cannot afford the transport to so, go somewhere else. So, so can I ask you this question then from your side as a lawyer? Because, uh, around February of this year, I called one of my friends who's a judge and he's a transplant patient. And I asked him, I said, I really want to sue United Healthcare for doing this to me because I could have died. And it was interesting because having that Still he was a also client. a transplant, well, he was a transplant patient too. And he said, you know, you're at a stage right now where you have to make a decision. Do you want to put all your energy into just getting better? Because this is a long road. Or do you want to put your energy into wanting to do this fight? Um, and at the time, I, he was right. I did call lawyers, and they and it, it kept going around into you have to be able to prove it first, right? Uh, you know, and and but then in a weird way, they were almost telling me, well, because you're alive and because you're here, in a weird way, the system did Is work for you. It did. That you just survive, but usually the cases that result in the grave harm, like a death or amputation okay. or uh, progress of the cancer to from a stage two or one to four, that, that takes away your chances of the living. Right. That's a part that the cases that the lawyers are motivated to take because they can get the good actually uh, retribution and the recovery for the family. Right. Those right. kind of thing. That's a, it's justified because it's an uphill battle. They're they are going to just fight it forever, for five years, six years, to right. just prove that they are not, they didn't act in a bad faith. Right, 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 they didn't right. And the contract. And they didn't do it on purpose. So this is one of the. I mean, I don't want to call it an insurance scam, but in so many ways, I feel like they're doing us a disservice because as a citizen, I did everything right. Insurance I got companies people, are not on your side. Yeah. They, they, they were, have to satisfy their shareholders by not paying you and collecting premiums. So it's so, a thing that they do. Even they don't pay the doctors. Yeah. So yeah. And the that's doctors and, uh, rates are going down. The yeah. premiums are going up and the, everyone is unhappy. Who is happy? The shareholders of the insurance companies. And, and, and that's where, you know, you as a lawyer right now, that's why I want to ask that is because like you said, not a lot of lawyers would be willing to take a case like mine because I came out on a successful end. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in a weird way, I feel like shouldn't Some someone like it. me want to fight just so that Maybe that money, let's say, doesn't necessarily go to me, but let's say we were able to win a case like that, and we could take that money and start a foundation, foundation. that helps other people so that they don't have to go through. Because for me, it could have been as simple as if I, was, if I literally had a liaison to walk me through all of the pitfalls. There were so many pitfalls, Sam, that I could have ended up in, and I would have just died. And then you would have been taken, or any a lawyer would have taken the case from I my family. There's no guarantee, but yeah. they, always the insurance company covered the base by putting a note in the system and saying sending a, a, a meritless letters to cover the bases. They didn't act good faith. You are missing this document. We are we needed right. this. Oh, we couldn't communicate, or there was a voicemail. We did it, approve it, but the other party didn't uh, respond to us. A lot of bo BS. So that that's comes really out. That the is really it, it shows a lack of policy procedure to just approve a very simple thing that is someone is on the deathbed and they cannot do it. Right, right. So you f you find like as a lawyer that's one of the that's the hard battle, right? That here you are, you're battle. trying to fight this yeah. big company that could just you lean on fight, you. You can fight, but the damages are important because it's going to be, they're going to drain the plaintiff lawyers out of the money by the experts and all those heavy discoveries and it should be something that you know if you're going to fight it. You are going to fight for justice and the family that is behind the person right. that got damaged or injured badly because of their malfeasance or bad faith actions. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This is definitely something I'd love to talk to you about, like, you know, off the show, just yeah. just to kind of go back and forth on that, because I am still in this recovery process. But 
I feel like the insurance companies are just getting away with it. They're yeah, just getting they away with the people. medical providers for just exactly uh, raising their fees. All yeah. the medical providers' contracts with the insurance company being in network is going down. Even the doctors, some of them, they don't want to see the patients on the health insurance because they don't pay them anything. Even the doc doesn't cover the cost of their offices. They pay them 150 bucks per visit. Right. Okay. No, it's <laughs> interesting. You, yeah. Just if you don't want to be a part of this insurance company, you should not. You should take the one fifty. You have to do the surgery or the some kind of surgery for five hundred bucks, thousand bucks, and no. even it's not worth it to wear gloves and go and do the surgery for the doctors. Yeah. <laughs> no, Sam. I'm really glad you're um, saying all of yeah. that because I feel like and then blame the lawyers for it as insurance company. Say, oh, we get sued a lot. The malpractice suit. No. Wow. It's not. It's about the insurance company and the industry. Because it's a profit driven. They are not nonprofit. I, I'm, they have I'm, to just make the shareholders happy. I'm I'm really glad you're saying that because I think like for people like my doctors who didn't have to do what they did for me, where they took the money from their foundation, their nonprofit, and That's upfront some other things. People with and, a good faith to come in and step in to fill the gap that for yeah. the people that they are pocketing money, right? And the insurance companies out of the death of the other people, right? The and, little and, man is get a step. On actually, that's it. Yeah, and and that's where I kind of feel like you know I'm in this in between where I am blessed and I, it is a miracle and I'm I'm so thankful to my donor to my donor's family. I'm and I'm thankful doctors to the doctors you. who helped me. Um, you know, to everyone who supported it. And at the same time, I'm still very angry <laughs> at, at United no, Healthcare. You should be angry. For, everyone should be angry for doing yeah. what they did. And and you know so exactly. Yeah, no, it's definitely something I'd love to just talk to you about some more, you know, maybe after the show and whatnot. Thank you for coming on the show. It's very my pleasure to have you here. And thank God that you are healthy as of now. And there is no problem. But I know the frustration that you go through when unjustly after paying all those premiums and you are getting rejected. And the bills are and still now coming. Still, bills are coming. Still, you can just take action against them because they failed to do it. And the mental anguish and uh, a stress that you went through because of that is a lot of value in it. And, and thank you, Sam. I mean, thank you no for doing what you're doing. And thank, thank you for educating everybody about thank the you. law. That's our job. We fight for justice. And this kind of lawsuits brings, is a, like a wake-up call to the legislation. And also also those people that they are in the insurance companies, that they, it's not about money, everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. But yeah. they say, oh, lawyers are about money. Yeah, it's about money. But if you do a malfeasance or you do a conduct in the bad faith, then there should be someone to enforce it. Who is going to enforce it? The lawyers. Yes. So yes. being sued is not a bad thing. So <laughs> suing people is not bad sometimes. Right, yeah. right. Not no, all the time, you. but that's a way that you correct the system. Yeah. They change the system in the adjusting the crimes and the... Uh, going after and getting approval for you, changing their policy procedure. If they don't get sued, they never change it. Right, right. Yep. Well, like I said, thanks for, for no. people like you, Sam. Thanks thank for you. having me. And thank you for coming on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you.